Well, greetings and salutations, everyone, and welcome to the bonus upload that brings us right up into Saturday Nightmares live from New York, 12 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I hope to see you all there. Before we jump into this bonus, though, a couple links. As many of you know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership is in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support the channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It does not cost a cent. Click the like button. takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads that I put out daily, click that bell icon and folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because all of these things really do help the channel to continue to grow and go. And yes, folks, they definitely do matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump in to tonight's bonus, shall we? Today's first worldwide subscriber submission. Hello, Jeff. Here is my encounter. It was June of 1997. I had recently been released from the hospital due to my duodenal ulcer plus torn esophagus while projectile vomiting the blood, guts, and stomach acid, the damage done. Losing a third of my blood triggered a code blue in the hospital. Remember the paddles being applied jolting me back to life. With heavy pollution in our sky affecting my health, I was invited by my friend to live in a small town of Oakville to help with the healing of my body. Oakville is situated on the shores of Lake Ontario between Toronto and Hamilton. During this time, I could barely drive my truck due to the excruciating pain of sitting down. Duodenal ulcer was developed in the small intestine. Sorry, Jeff, for being a long intro. It's part of the story. It is tantamount to the encounter taking place. Sunday. The time was midsummer June. On a late afternoon in Sunday, I had asked my friend if there was a place I could ride my giant brand mountain bike, like a trail course. The friend said, come along for the ride to the hardware store and We'll show a location of an old rock quarry now with a mountain bike trail. Strange, as we neared the site of the rock quarry, my sixth sense of intuition started going off the scale, saying to myself, great, here we go again with an unknown high strangeness awaiting me. Monday, started gingerly riding my mountain bike at around three in the afternoon to the old rock quarry. Tough going, feeling bumps along the way triggered excruciating pain, almost turned back twice after hitting a pothole or two. Finally, made it to the outer edge of the rock quarry where a long, narrow, rock-strewn pathway awaited. All sizes and shapes, making it impossible to ride. I dismount and walk the bike into a small, slash medium, and large rock pathway for approximately 200 feet. Strange, the sixth sense of danger has subsided for the time being as I now take in the scenery of the rock quarry for the first time. I see a couple of dudes riding their mountain bikes on the trails. Difficult section was on the left side of stand of trees. In the middle was a small clearing with the shoreline straight ahead of Lake Ontario. To the right was another stand of trees with the easy trail for riding your mountain bike. Then, to the far left, in the back of me, was a rock-slash-sand cliff somewhere about 500 feet tall, and was part of the pathway with the ridge tapering off along the path. I was too sore from the mountain bike ride to the rock quarry to try out the trails. Instead, I only walked a small section of the mountain bike trails, stopping at the edge of the clearing to roll and smoke a joint of black hash. Medicinal pain relief. 
The two dudes see me smoking a J, so they come over and chat, telling me they help build the mountain bike trails. I twist another one up and share with the dudes while asking about the trails, telling me the right side was easy, two out of five, and the left side was difficult, four out of five. They depart shortly after. Now I'm alone in this parquet. I relax for a few moments, getting some much needed healing sun rays on my body. Then the strange feeling of being watched takes over. I look around and see no one else in the vicinity. I stare off into the distant waters of Lake Ontario. Whoa, I got a strong sensation. I am really being watched this time. I turn around to look up the tall cliff. I swear I had seen movement somewhere on that rock slash sand face of the cliff. Then the feeling of being watched is now overwhelmingly coming from the far left side of the stand of trees, only I can't see anyone around me. I was even thinking the dudes returned to the bike trail for some more. Taking a deep breath, I tried to meditate to relax. Instead, I start getting creeped out with my sixth sense kicking into overdrive, warning me that it's time to leave pronto. I even look back into the parquet as I walk along the rock-strewn pathway. Checking a couple of times, no one was sneaking up on me from atop of the ridgeway. Make it out to the roadway, slowly I pedal towards my friend's home. What a strange, interesting first day at the rock quarry. I made a com commitment to return every day until Friday. Tuesday, I awoke feeling much better today, yet still having trouble bending down to tie my shoelaces. I start riding a little easier to the rock quarry parquet at around 2 in the afternoon. Foolishly, I was riding my mountain bike faster than I should have. So when I hit a pothole on the roadway, I doubled over with terror-inducing, excruciating pain. Taking 10 minutes to recover, I slowly ride to the quarry, hitting another bump in the road straining my stomach muscles in the process due to traveling on the opposite side of the roadway construction. Amazingly, my self-determination keeps me going forward. I now limp with twice as much excruciating pain, yelling out occasional swear words of relief. My sixth sense intuition is now very minimal, almost nil, when I entered the park. This makes me feel better. Only for the time being, I smoke a joint of hash and try the easy section of the mountain bike trail for 15 minutes. Foolishly, I slipped my front tire off a log and landed with a thud. I cry out in pain as I hunch over my bike, making all kinds of noises like a wounded animal in regards to the pain. While hunched over, I need to tie my left shoelace, so I turn the sprocket to the top left pedal starting to tie my shoe, when alarm bells start ringing in my head, warning, warning. Over to the far left of the rocky shoreline, I see a creature scrambling full out, running bipedally, about roughly 20 miles an hour for 20 yards of distance in a straight path. At first, my thought was rummy, or derelict-type person with rough, disheveled clothing, standing tall, about 6'1", maybe 6'2", in height. Getting closer to my position, I am now able to distinguish it has a lanky build leaning forward as it is running with its long arms down to its knees. Strange posture indeed to run like that, I'm thinking to myself. I now straighten up from my hunched over position on my bike and in doing so catch this creature by surprise. Now I am staring with this creature, an animalistic presence, wolf-like, not staring directly at its face, noticing swept-back styled pointed ears on its each side of its face, flat-type nose, colors of gold and brown below the waist and upper backside with a white-colored chest area. At first, it looked like clothing as I wrestled with this thought for many years afterward. Instead, it was short, thick, shaggy fur, colors of gold, dark brown with white-chested colored area. 
All of a sudden, the creature realizes I'm looking directly at him, male, although no visible genitals, still running in a straight path until I make eye contact. Then, in a slight panic that I see him, it does a complete 180 and turns into the back left side of the tree line. Running straight in a line, it veers into a half-circle clockwise motion. I see plenty of side details, no tail visible. Long, tapered wolf head, light, kind of streamlined, with almond-shaped eyes spaced far apart, plus the ears long pointed on the sides of its head. Teeth just barely visible, protruding from the jaws upper and lower. When only running, the mouth was slightly agape, with a black, flat nose area. Very slight snout. The face looked almost human, yet still retained animalistic properties. Wow! What the hell did I just see, I say to myself, as I look toward the creature's position in the far left back tree line, about 200 feet away from where I was on the trails by the edge of the clearing near the right side stand of trees. Feeling somewhat frightened as to the uncertainty of what I had saw, I start pedaling my mountain bike on the trail heading closer towards its location, keeping an eye on the creature while it milled around the back tree line. I did not flee right away. Maybe it had something to do with previously seeing a Sasquatch. I didn't feel threatened at this moment of time. Determined, I was to continue with my therapy to improve my health. Now I manage to complete only a couple more passes on the mountain bike trail. Every time I reach the left side, stand of trees, I would stop riding and straddle my bike, planting my feet on the ground. This was now what my sixth sense was warning. My intuition was still on high alert. I would gander towards this strange creature who was pacing back and forth in the small clearing at the back of the tree line. Always, it was looking down on the ground like it was looking for something it had lost back and forth short distance of 20 feet it traveled, eyes focused on the ground. It never did turn to look at me at this stage as I watched it intently from the trail. On my third path, I noticed the creature was now holding a plastic shopping bag seen in its human-like right hand with long fingers on long arms reaching near its knees. I forgot to mention it had short Thick, wide nails, two inches long, tapered off to a sharp point. Dull, whitish color. While definitely did not look like claws, this happened 23 years ago. Some parts of the encounter still foggy to me, since I never had anyone to talk about this encounter to. I'm trying to remember if the creature did actually drop down on all fours while stationed in the back lot. One other thing is while I stopped to look at the creature every time I entered the left side trail in the stand of trees with the creature at the back of the section, while I was staring hard at this creature, I am sure it knew I was looking. Only now, I believe it was purposely avoiding eye contact with me. I believe this was actually a ruse to get me to think it was not interested in me at all on this day. By now, I know it's some kind of wolf-like creature or deformed human with wolf attributes. Like I said, I saw a Sasquatch a couple times before this encounter, so I was thinking anything is possible at this point. I go through a couple of animals in my thoughts to make a comparison and still center on a wolf, only not thinking about a werewolf. Not yet, anyway. I slowly leave the parquet after an hour and a half of riding the trails, with one eye keeping track of the creature till safely exiting onto the rocky pathway. Baffled, rode off to my friend's place for an early evening. Great, no one's home to talk about what I had just saw. Wednesday, riding back to the old rock quarry in the afternoon, 4 p.m. Feeling still rough from the previous hospitalization, my muscles are slowly gaining strength while the guts are healing. The pain is always present with the sounds being emitted from me like a wounded animal still present when overexerting myself. My intuitions are on high alert on this day as I make my way onto the mountain bike trail at the rock quarry. I didn't see the creature right away. 
until I made my way onto the left side of the trail. The creature is now moved up from where it was previously stationed. There, at about 90 feet away, it was crouched behind a shrub with its head and shoulders visible. I stop and straddle my bike. Feet on the ground, I look directly at the wolf-like creature. I notice the almond-shaped eyes are small, green pupil, with a heavy yellow tinge to them. Appearing animalistic in nature, both the eyes and its demeanor or facial expressions. Any thoughts of this may be a human is now tossed aside. The creature seems to be exhibiting a curiousness towards my presence. I study the face yet barely see any teeth, small ones, only uh, protruding from the upper and lower jaw. The nose is almost a chocolate brown, not quite black, very short snout, almost flat in appearance say like a Maltese dog with their pushed-up noses. The wolf-like creature was purposefully hiding its arms, body, and legs from being seen. Only the uppermost torso and head were visible. Mostly I focused on those freaky eyes looking directly at them, seeing them almost mesmerizing me in a way. There, about two hours on this day, a couple of other folks are at the quarry using the trails, may help explain why it was about 90 feet away. Staying behind that same bush crouched down as I stopped twice to take a look at the creature. I could hear the activity of the folks present in the park. Remember taking a break near the rock slash sand face of the cliff, staring upwards for any caves or activity, marveling how tall the cliff was. Noted on my last pass on the trail, stopping to see the creature, that it appeared to be too curious for my liking. Jeff, this is the part that has intrigued me. After Luke explained human-like behavioral and thinking, it seemed like it was studying my posture and demeanor with my sixth sense tingling away, almost slightly worried about the other people in the park wondering if they were safe with this creature present yet didn't see or notice the creature paying attention to the others, only myself it was checking out. Still, I was uncertain now if these wolf-like creatures posed a threat. While I figured out this park or cliff in the back was its home, only one more day to go now for my mini therapy sessions before I head back to see my mom in Toronto starting to feel better as I enjoy the afternoon taking in the sights. I pass on for going, another go on the trails, instead I twist up a joint and let the smoke carry me away in thought. My sixth sense is saying there is danger aplenty under this false guise of serenity. I walk my bike toward the rock-strewn pathway while glancing back toward the creature's last position, seeing it stay in put for the time being. Hitting the roadway, I finally ride off in the sunset. Thursday, last day of the encounter, I awoke this morning with throbbing pain coursing through my body, for I must have overexerted myself the day before. This is going to be a joint before I go and a couple of Percocets to dull the sharp pain. Super determined to complete my therapy sessions at the rock quarry, I slowly and painfully make my way to the easiest trail section. Once again, I find I am the only soul present on this day. Yeah, I did enjoy others also being present at the parquet. Well, the calm, peaceful serenity of being alone, allowing the full meditation to take effect, helping in calming one's nerves and mind in the process. One shall soon realize how important this mind over matter, matter over mind mantra was in the encounter, for it gave me a clarity needed to understand what was taking place. Today, I was slowly making it around the trail course. I didn't see the creature offhand at first. Only my inti intuition says otherwise. The sixth sense is pounding away in my skull, warning me there's something going on. I find myself now on the difficult trail section where the creature has been seen previously at 90 feet away. Well, big surprise, my intuition is right. On when I spot the wolf-like creature now only a mere 30 feet away, I stop, straddle my bike, once again planting my feet in the ground. I look straight at this creature who is now only a hop, skip, and a jump away from me. Something different today. The previously exhibited behavior of curiosity has given way. 
Now there's a look of determination on the wolf-like creature's face. Yeah, it's still crouched down behind a different shrub this time. I strain to see its arms and legs only catching slight glimpses. See, only full face this time. Something's not right, I say to myself as I cautiously watch the creature. When I slowly ride away, why did it move in so close less than 30 feet away? and was awaiting my arrival to the quarry in this very spot, I asked myself. All right, now I make my way around the mountain bike trail course. Eventually, I am heading for another sighting with the wolf-like creature, albeit 30 feet away or less. I start approaching where I saw the creature last, and there it was, still waiting, waiting for me with a strange look on its face. This is now something totally different, a look and behavior being exhibited by this creature. This is the part where Luke helped explain that the creature was thinking with human-like qualities, like it was calculating an attack, if it can proceed or not. Right away, I notice this changed behavioral trait, so I dismount off my bike by pushing it forward through my open legs. Cautiously, I place my mountain bike beside me on the right side so as to offer a shield-like effect between me and the wolf-like creature. Now, as I stand there, I look down to see several different sets of my footprints. What I suddenly realized is all of the creature's positions in this stand of trees have all along been cunning, plan cunningly planned, for they all lined up in a row. I didn't realize I was stopping in the exact same spot till now. Right away, I look straight into its eyes of the wolf-like creature. There's a glint in its eyes with a snarl on its jaw like it's getting ready to attack me. The snarling and growling pick up intensely. Since sensing fear in myself, I desperately try to avoid panicking and running. I very slowly walk away with my mountain bike still on my right side for protection. Till I hit the right angle curve in the trail, looking back till I lose sight of the creature. I worry it's going to cut me off on my right at the entrance to the rocky pathway. I was really dreading this scenario, yet it did not unfold this way. When it circled me around my left flank and hits me from somewhere up on the cliff with the most incredibly loud infrasound of a wolf howl, the sound was reverberating right through my body. Yeah, I swear I have heard wolf howls before. They were small peanuts compared to this late afternoon wolf owl. Twentyfold seemed how loud this was as I started onto the rocky pathway. I see a pair of guys heading towards me. While each one has a 10-speed style bicycle, I laugh to myself saying, they are going to tear them bikes to pieces. Where are their mountain bikes they need for these trails? They all of a sudden ask me if that was indeed a wolf howl they had heard as we passed each other. They entered the quarry and me leaving about halfway mark on the rocky path. Yes, yes, I say a second time to these guys with their 10-speed bikes. Funny thing, yet frighteningly scary, these guys get a short distance from me when we're hit with another enormously loud infrasound wolf howl as loud as the first one. My body's reverberating feeling inside of it. The two guys turn and start yelling for me to wait up for them. They are white in their face with fear and ask me to walk with them out to the rocky pathway. Here I am thinking maybe they're going to push me down so they can escape with their lives. I keep peering up toward the ridge, yet didn't see any wolf-like creature. While the thought crossed my mind, there may actually be a second creature presently hiding. Nothing further had happened. When we finally hit the roadway, I talked to the guys for a couple of minutes and we parted company. Maybe they were my guardian angels. Jeff, this is my werewolf type creature, only I was living the moment writing this encounter for you. Thank you very much. Today's second worldwide subscriber dog man encounter. All right, Jeff, I'm going to give you the info on my encounter. In July of last year, I went to southern Norway where I have a little holiday, holiday cabin. The cabin is situated out and above a little town of Ave, approximately 65 kilometers from the port of Christensen. 
to the north. To get to the cabin, you have to drive up from Ave on a paved road which takes you into the hills. You pass lakes on the way and a handful of houses, lots of forest and water runs. My cabin is on the very end of that area, 16 kilometers into the wild. Besides one other cabin that's situated 500 meters away and only occupied from time to time. I'm all by myself out here. My cabin is above a small lake resting on a slope. On the third day of my arrival, I went outside onto the cabin's deck to have a smoke. It was about 10 p.m. and still very light outside because in the summer months, the sun really never sets. I heard noises, water splashing, grunts coming from the lake below. The shore is about 30 meters from the deck to the cabin. I walked up to the edge of the deck to see what was going on because I was getting freaked out. When I looked down to the shore, I saw a hunched over hairy creature trying to pull a dead moose onto the shore by the neck. The thing turned around and has apparently noticed me standing there looking at it. It swung its head around violently, giving me a grim kind of look. It turned its back to me and it casually ran into the brush. The creature was about man size, 180 centimeters or so. The weight, I'd guess, no more than 250 pounds. It had a protruding snout like a wolf's upright ears, not too big, and it was covered in tough black and brown hair. Arms and legs were normal size, the legs were straight, and the overall appearance was pretty slim-bodied. I went back inside the cabin, panicked, locked and barricaded the back door and back windows. I went for an axe that I had kept in the utility room by the front door. Sat in a chair by the back door, lights off, only the oven and fireplace was lit. I could not believe or make out what it was, and I was even more freaked, realizing that far down south in Norway there are basically no wolves or bears. Ten minutes in, I heard the most radical howls I had ever heard. They sounded mad, crazed in a way. I didn't even get to the car, which was right out front, close to the main entrance. I was petrified and could not shut one eye the whole night. The howls and commotion outside in the bushes went on pretty much all night. Next day, I carefully left the cabin and went for my car to head into town. Problem is, I have no internet or any connection out there. I went straight to the police station to file a report on what I saw. The officials told me that it must have been a big dog trying to put me off. They didn't laugh, as I expected. They did not look at me in my eyes and started to talk to each other in Norwegian. They looked at each other in the eyes, however, seeming a bit nervous. I was pretty pissed off, so I went outside being put off like that. I received no copy of a report or anything. The last few days of my stay, nothing else happened except that the carcass of the moose was picked up by someone or something. Nothing left at the scene. I checked with a local and asked him if there were any bear or wolves that far south, just to confirm that what I had already knew, he replied no. Besides all of that, I forgot to mention that the creature casually went off running on two legs to this day. Even though it has gotten better, I feel paranoid. Even around familiar places like my home, yard, and whatnot. Only in these groups have I found a little peace. And listening to your show, which I found out about when I was searching online for my encounter. Back before all of this happened, I was the type of person that would laugh at the thought of these cryptids and whatnot. I was totally thrown off the plate thinking that I am going mad to question my sanity, and to this day, I have a hard time believing any of it myself. I don't want to. Today's final worldwide subscriber, Dogman Submission. Hey Jeffrey, my name is NS and I live in Selkirk, Manitoba, Canada. This is in the Prairie, Central Canada. First of all, I just had to say that I love your show. You are a great host. Last fall, my adult son had two encounters. I don't know if they were a dogman or werewolf. We live about 20 miles north of Winnipeg, 
Selkirk has about 11,000 people. The outskirts of the town have lots of trees, and we are situated along the Red River. One night, I believe it was in August of 2019, my son was walking home from work. Where he was working at the time, he was getting off shortly after midnight. It's only about a 5-10 to ten minute walk. He would walk up the next street from where we lived, and that would take him directly to work. He came home after his shift, shaking and upset. He said something followed him, but keeping behind the houses as he walked, it was tall, walking upright and strange-looking. It gave him the creeps. My son's father is native Canadian, and my son said he felt like it was somehow connected to his aboriginal culture. We have a large indigenous population here. About two months later, he again got off shortly after midnight and was going to meet his girlfriend, who lives on the other side of town, about two and a half miles away. That part of town is much quieter. He met up with her for a little while, had a few drinks, and then was walking home around 2 a.m. He called me, kind of laughing. He said, Mom, I must be drunk. I thought that was strange because I can tell that he's had too many. He doesn't drink too often. He sounded perfectly fine. I asked him why he thought that. He told me, well, I just passed a werewolf walking on the opposite side of the street of me. That's when I started doing research. I had never heard of a dog man or thought werewolves could be real. Since it was dark, he didn't know if it had a tail or not. He said it was at least seven feet or more. And it did not pay him any attention. It just kept walking. Thank you for what you do. Keep it up. I hope you are well. Wishing you all on the channel the best. NS. And there you have it, folks. This night ending bonus, which I do hope you all enjoyed as much as I enjoyed sharing it with you. I'd like to thank you all for supporting this channel. After all, it is your support that keeps this channel growing and going and what gives us all a place and a chance to share our experiences and theories judgment free. Just simply treated with the respect we all deserve. Thank you. Please stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant, keeping an eye on our children, pets, family, and friends. These creatures are real. They are out there and dangerous. Share this information with those you love and care about, and it may just help save their lives someday. Until next time, never stop asking questions, never stop searching for the truth, and God bless.